Coming after, have you ever thought about when you apply for a job, the possibility that artificial intelligence is really playing a role behind the scenes? It's happening. It's not just a trend. It sounds like it may be here to stay. So we want to prepare everybody. We bring in now Maria Retan, who is the founder and coach of Jump Team. She helps people make the jump from news and other careers into a totally different field. This is her wheelhouse. Good morning, Maria. Good to see you. Hi, Jenny. Good to see you as well. Well, so let's talk about this trend first. I mean, the, the idea that you would be having to do an interview with, with, with a robot on the other end of the screen or perhaps complete questionnaires that are guided by algorithms within artificial intelligence is, is very unique. Is this actually happening out there? Uh, it's not only happening, it's happening at most companies. Uh, approximately 83% of companies out there use some form of artificial intelligence, otherwise known as AI, in their HR processes. So yes, absolutely. If you're out there interviewing with any company today, you need to be prepared for these types of artificial, I call them artificial interviews, even though they're the real deal and you have to prepare for them like they're the real deal. So we're looking at this video of a man interviewing with a robot. Is it gone that far or is it more subtle? You know, it, it really can be much more subtle and I have found that most companies use a more subtle method. So yes, you might actually see uh, an artificial person, but really more likely you're going to run into a chat box. So if you think about a live session where a chat box pops up with a question, okay. you may see that. Also, uh, one way video interviews are very, very common. So this is where you may have to download some software onto your laptop. You'll receive instructions on how to do that. You'll also re uh, receive instructions on um, whether or not you get to re-record your answers or if you have a time limit on how long you can talk about yourself. And then you basically hit start and you get peppered with you know, about six different questions. Um, this type of approach tends to happen in one of the initial interviews. It's a way to weed out uh, potential, um, you know, potential options for the employer. When I think about those chat boxes, I, I know that for me, typically, like when I'm doing a chat box, it's like I'm talking to Wayfair about my furniture delivery. I'm not looking at my punctuation or, you know, hopefully I'm being kind, but not over the top. But in an interview, it's almost like you need to realize that what you're typing in there is going potentially directly to the hiring manager, right? How, how should we conduct ourselves in these types of interviews? Absolutely. I say every time you're doing an interview, whether you're using a chat box or whether it's that one-way video um, uh, opportunity that I described, you are being interviewed. You have to act like you are in a one-on-one. -on -one. So you have to make sure that you have your key messages in front of you. You understand um, what you need to respond to and anticipate the types of questions. You want to uh, prepare your appearance for the interview, right? You wanna be wearing the right thing for the interview. You want to check your camera and your lighting just like you would if you were doing a, a Zoom interview or a Zoom call. Sure. You wanna show up like you would be showing up in person, only you're not in person, which makes it a little weird and sometimes a little awkward. Yeah, really quickly, how do we personalize this? I mean, I think back to job searches, I would send a thank you note or perhaps you know, yeah. know something specific about that hiring manager so we could uh, have something in common or have something to chat about. Uh, how do you do that when the, the other person's a robot? Yeah, absolutely. Well, number one, you always wanna make sure you're doing three things in an interview. One, you wanna prep and you want to make sure that you're aligning your job skills with those listed in the job description. So what you're doing is you are creating keywords in your messages that you're gonna have in front of you during the interview that draw from the job description. They're the exact words used when outlining the key the skills that are required for the job or the job responsibilities. So you're personalizing your responses in that way, showing that you're the right fit. Secondly, um, you wanna make sure that you're talking about the impact you're going to have on that particular organization. The other thing I would say too, is you're looking to make a cultural fit. Okay. So in your research on that organization, find out what their mission, vision, and values are 
and speak to how yours emulate theirs. So again, you're trying to make that personal connection with that robot, but really that company is who you're trying to make a connection with. And at the end of the day, Jenny, you wanna follow up like you would with any other interview. Someone contacted you to arrange for this virtual interview. Make sure you follow up with the person who contacted you, thank them for their time, express your interest in the position and your desire to have another phone call, oh, hopefully this time with someone in person. Thank you so much. Sorry I had to cut you off, and it was great to connect yeah. with you. You guys, if you want more advice from Maria, here's her info, jumpteamcoaching.com. If you let her know that you saw her on Morning After, she will give you your first call for free.